everyone! Welcome to Game Roulette, where us four beans will be playing Stubot. Uh, and uh, before we get into the details of the game, uh, let's take a quick uh, go around the virtual table and introduce the players. Uh, and also tell us where we can find you on the internets. Uh, let's just go uh, clockwise on our screen. Uh, so we'll start with Angela, then Ding, and Val, and then myself. So take it away, Angela. Hello there, wonderful viewers, and anyone else upon the interweb traversal space who has happened to come upon our little uh, show for this evening. Hi, I'm Angela, otherwise known as Phoenix24 from on Twitter or the Philosopher over at Patreon. I'm a writer, I play a lot of games, work, trying to work on making my own game. So, that's me. Uh, you can usually find me with a lot of trans, gay, and or just queer feels in general, and also a lot of disabled feels on the Twitter and in other spaces. So, that's me. Ting. Hi, I'm Ting. Uh, you find me on Twitter, uh, Ting Tut. It's one word, T-I-N-G-T-U-T. -T. And, uh, on, on that page, there's a there's a card with all my other links on it. Uh, wonderful, uh, Val. Hey, um, Val, you can find me on the internet at Villain Vicencio for most things, um, or on my podcast Kingdom Hearts of Forgotten Era, an interstitial actual play. Um, just there, I'm so I'm so many places. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here. Hey, so happy to have you. And I am Miriam. Uh, I will be the facilitator for this game. You can find me on Twitter at media underscore junkie. And uh, uh, I, I do a lot of things. Uh, you can find me here. You can find me uh, on uh, Kahania, which is every alternate Wednesday. Last night was our penultimate episode for this year and this particular season. Uh, a lot of stuff's going down. There's a wedding to crash. Uh, and uh, I'm. you can also see me on the Masafers as well as uh, Prism Pals. And uh, if you want to check out all the things I'm doing, definitely check out my Twitter. Uh, with that said, uh, let's get into the game. So, uh, because Stupot is actually a wonderful game that is a uh, GM-less uh, game about uh, uh, running a tavern, uh, and we're all a party of former adventurers, and it's we're basically going to play a series of mini games uh, that uh, is essentially. Uh, how we deal with running our, our new, our essentially our transition and retirement from our previous adventuring life. Uh, but uh, also this game has been designed by Takuma Okada, um, amazing bean. Um, definitely go check him out. Um, and uh, I will type in the link at some point where you can uh, get this wonderful game. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, because this game can take a while and we only have about three hours or so to go through this game, we did a couple of things ahead of time for the sake so that we can get into the mini game section. So there is a character creation, um, which uh, we will now go through our characters. Uh, again, we'll go in similar order uh, where we will uh, talk a little bit about what our characters do. Then we're going to go over what our tavern is like, our tavern setup we've also done ahead of time, and then we'll start the game. So why don't we start off with our characters, tell us who you are and a couple of cool things your character um, is, was, as an adventurer, uh, and we shall start with Alicia. Thank you. Alicia is... Alicia, uh, Yes, no worries. <laughs> Alicia was uh, essentially a, a ranger in a previous life, in her previous life uh, up to coming to here. Uh, she carries with her what looks to be a handmade, but also now at this point kind of worn down longbow. It's been a while since she's had to use it and tried to use it. She has a lot of different uh, clothing and such that it's a mixture between like 
leather kind of armor and hides and pelts for various creatures. It, it's what I would imagine, think a fantasy equivalent of for anyone who's ever looked at uh, the sort of outfits that are uh, emblematic of Cholitas from the Andes or South America. Uh, those kind of women, they have tendently kind of a long past kind of the knee, almost to like the ankles, flouncy kind of uh, dress and a big long shawl that goes like almost all the way down to their waist. And kind of this, uh, think almost like the little tramp style kind of like hats, uh, but sometimes like hand woven, sometimes made from like llama wool and such. She just kind of looks like she's from nature. She's decked out in nature, but cute in a way, cute, but functional. And uh, yeah, that's kind of her. She has very comforting, but exhausted eyes. And she's also kind of tall and has kind of almost like draconic or worm-like uh, scaled kind of like fins that go off of her cheeks and also a little bit of a tail coming out of her back lower end that's her that's elicia wonderful and uh ding why didn't you tell us a little character uh my character is chakamo uh, he is uh dorvin well he used to be a bard uh and uh now he is the the uh, the tavern's uh, entertainment uh, and uh, talent booker. Uh, he has purple purple streaks in his uh, hair and beard, and likes to wear very uh, stylish. Uh, attire, and he has uh, you know, trust, trusting eyes. Okay, cool. Val, uh, tell us more about your character. Uh, my character's name is Ignacio, but he allows his friends to call him Iggy. Um, he is a uh, very tall um, workman uh, who has uh, heavy, worn gauntlets that he wears, um, and uh, like really uh, uh, worn down and like well used, but like heavily decorated uh, leather armor that it looks like he has like drawn like symbols and like pictures onto to like remember what he's done during his adventuring. Um, he has. Uh, long braided uh black hair and his skin is like a like a grayish green and he has a uh, he has mischievous eyes like he he's a very he's a very uh a bouncy type of uh person for being someone as large as he is and um he he prefers to work with his hands because he he used to be like a like the 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 grappler unarmed fighter of the group. Wonderful. And as for myself, uh, to no one's surprise, I am playing uh, a wizard uh, who is called Flambe uh, with a, a very pristine and immaculate robes uh, and a very sturdy staff, uh, and uh, has piercing eyes, uh, and uh, they tend to be a little, perhaps, um, precious in 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 a lot of ways <laughs> of not wanting to get their hands dirty or themselves dirty or anything dirty. And uh, uh, more often than not, is seen casting some sort of little cantrip or another to remove any soiling on their person. I love it so much. Hmm. Alicia does uh, not understand this. <laughs> I forgot to say, uh, uh, Jagmo, um, he doesn't have the best voice anymore after uh, the scene, after the of the adventures then so he can play the uh the hang. Right? It's, uh, 
it's a, it's a metal drum that looks like a, a, a pedal shell. And like, there's, there's circular divots in it. And you, you bring it with your uh, hand. Ting, your audio is getting a little muffled. Yeah. I caught I caught yep. the most important part of that, which was a turtle shell. Turtle shell drum, drum which is which really is great. Both I, I I'm dying of happiness and also oh god this, what is our tower? Uh yeah we should uh, we should probably get into, uh the discussion of our tavern. Who would like to begin? Uh we have picked a name and we have uh picked what. Where it is located and what the look of it is. And once we go over those details, I'll talk a little bit more about the game and how it starts off. Uh, so who would like to uh, talk about uh, what the name of our tavern is? Is it... Does it do we do we need to ask about who should be the one to introduce that? I feel like we know uh, who should yeah. be the one. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Those of you tuning in, uh, prepare for another one of uh, Mariam's amazing uh, naming conventions to appear again, which is to say, yeah. a pun. Where where did this name come from, uh, Mariam? Did it come from a specific place? I feel like it came from a land down under. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, 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 we laugh because the name of the tavern <laughs> is... Down under. <laughs> Although I feel like um, the locals, when they get a little kind of slurred or, you know, when they're trying to talk really fast, end up calling it the downer. It's, 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 it's one of those unfortunate things with our name where it turns into the meme of two people, of the same person saying the ex uh, different things, but it sounds like the exact same thing. It's like down under. Yeah, no, the downer. The down under. Yeah, the downer. It's just that. <laughs> But it's our literal tavern. Yep. Uh, uh, so, our tavern. Uh, who would like to go into how, uh, what, what its locations and looks are? So, I was like, what if our tavern was carved into a mountain, and then we did it. <laughs> we did it. Because I, <laughs> I just love the idea of like a like a a. a like build like like pueblo style buildings like just uh, like despite the danger everything is just carved right into the side of a mountain. Uh huh. The, the, the definition of a building that's like yeah yeah I see you nature let's see what you got and then it's like okay nature tries to do something not good enough try again. I mean. I feel like we we just took advantage of a great opportunity that opened before us, literally. Yep. <laughs> like just a landslide happened, and then there's a tear. There's a geo that opens up, and then I was like, you know, I feel like Giacomo was singing something about you know the those uh, windswept mountains, and then a landslide came crashing down and that literally happened and we're like huh you know what we should open a tavern here you know what this is this is quite honestly not the most absurd start to a business venture that i think anyone's ever heard so let's go with it <laughs> yeah why not looks up lyrics to a particular famous song I appreciate I appreciate you so much, Mario, for doing this. <laughs> so we have we have a we have a Pueblo style tavern built into the side of a mountain or out of a section of a mountain mm -hmm. that came about because of singing, which is amazing. Which is definitely on brand. It's it's on brand, let's be fair. I mean Giacomo has not led us astray so far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what else do we got in this tavern? So it's carved into a mountain. Uh, it's Angela said it was made out of like a cracked shield. Yeah, yeah. I was I was it's thinking it was lighting. for literal natural lighting. And I think what was it that one someone suggested like 
the light the light yeah the lighting is like like little fragments of it yeah like little growing glowing crystals it's really neat it's just and, mood lighting the entire time and the local flora by you know like i feel like glowing glowing um uh, bioluminance lessens mushrooms occasionally i mean oh. one it adds to the atmosphere and if you're not having fun it adds to the atmosphere you can just it's right there natural <laughs> you know natural drugs <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't we don't charge. <laughs> no, it's, pay, it's pain a pluck. You get to choose your own. <laughs> pain a pluck. Uh, pick, what is it? Pick your uh, pick your drug. <laughs> like take, yeah. pick, take your own pick. I, I do kind of like pain a pluck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... pay to pluck. Pain I, I want the pay the. <laughs> it's a service that we charge. That that's our gimmick. That's how we get. That's we actually get. That's the difference between someone else who like. This was a terrible idea and we went with it. No, this was a terrible idea and we went with it and we're lasting. We don't quite understand how we're lasting. Apparently people are out of it. Uh, okay, so uh, mood lighting and atmosphere aside, <laughs> I feel like we have another, f another two or three features that make our tavern. Um... I believe it had something to do with the natural heating. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Uh, we have uh, a. Yeah. So we have stone beds that are heated with uh, geothermal heat. It's kind and of you know, warm. Yeah, it. it sometimes it's. Not not it's not every, it's not to everyone's liking, but you know, we. have... We'll, we'll get clientele that would prefer it. And I feel like I this early in our biz, we don't quite have control over it. There's some natural yeah. hot spots. <laughs> mm -hmm. a, a guest or two may have discovered which ones aren't exactly under our control to our dismay. <laughs> Like, you know, when we said that uh, we might consider having, like, you know, like a bed and breakfast and spa, you know, like an exfoliating scrub, that's not what we meant. That's not, that's not at all what we meant, <laughs> and yet this is what we've provided, so of course we're charging extra for having provided you an additional service. <laughs> oh god, am I working in the hotel industry again? Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> And I think our last feature um, is also, uh, I believe we all we also have a stage, a nat uh, built in so that we could have performances. Uh, but I believe also it is a good place for Giacomo to run his uh, uh, secondary hustle. Just scouting. It is. Oh. Scouting, that's... Oh, I guess it is my second... Yeah. Just always oh, looking for people. Just, whoever comes in is like, hey, this is really nice. Hey, you interested? Okay. I think we also have secret tunnels. Yep. Secret tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> Through the mouth. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we also do have secret passages that uh, we found as we were clearing our new place for uh, opening up for business. Uh, <laughs> so with that, uh, part of the game and the me mechanics, aside from sort of building our world building the tavern together, is tavern raiding. So um, this is we start off essentially with a one and everything one being the lowest level uh and during the game as we play essentially a series of mini games we will have the ability to upgrade our tavern as we become larger as we become more well known uh so there's three ratings that uh are currently there cuisine atmosphere and service so at uh, essentially a, a, a one star rating uh, for cuisine, we are essentially a very cramped kitchen in a very small pantry, 
cheap local wines and a small brick oven. Um, or rather, just one of the stone beds that uh, we've decided is just too hot overall and makes a perfect uh, kitchen. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's amazing. Stone then, fire grill. Exactly, it's a stone fire grill, like like we like like it says on the tin. <laughs> uh, we also uh, there's atmosphere. Uh, which is essentially the vibe and feeling and the experience. And at one, we essentially uh, offer straw mattresses, although in our case, it's really just slightly cooler stone uh, st uh, stone <laughs> gr grill slab. fires. A slab. A slab. <laughs> There's not even like ma um, uh, batting. It's just a slab. Um, although we sell it as like a, uh, what is it? A, uh, um, spine straightening service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good um, for wow. bad bags. Exactly. Um, narrow you won't chimneys. You have one after you sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's narrow chimneys and bare walls, although in our case, we don't really have it. Well, the chimney is actually the old, like, a dormant caldera, we think. We're not quite sure. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's still active. Who knows? Hmm? <laughs> we haven't sorted out that detail yet. <laughs> and then uh, our last uh, sort of like sub rating is the service rating. Uh, so this is a measure of how the tavern operates um, and how. Uh, good we are and uh, an example for a uh, you know one star is a former farmhand that we found or an injured local guard uh, do we want to do we are, are we currently a DIY where we're all kind of doing our stuff or did we actually take on someone I kind of so so uh, check me if 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 this is this if this is weird, but I kind of like the idea that like when we were making a tavern, we just found this like we just found this like little like lava guy, and he's just like, "Why are you in my house?" <laughs> and then we're like, "We'll bring more people to your house. You won't be lonely." And he's like, "You know what? Deal." Just just like a uh, you know, like a like fire elemental or or. Or uh, like a salamander. Um, which do you think would be like more interesting? I like both. I kind of like a lava element. Because it's yeah, just like, I you know, do. maybe maybe the reason why everything kind of runs temperamentally is because they're kind of temperamental. So it's like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're we're, hel we're helping transition the tavern into a much more workable state because he's tried to do it, but he's never understood why it didn't work before when it did come. <laughs> into, does, like why, when he tried to run it initially. Yeah, it's like why why do people run screaming and why do their skin turn red? It's like it's like Jonah, it's you like, can't you can't literally be lava <laughs> for everything. It will burn people. It's like I deal with it fine. They're not made of lava. <laughs> So we're really doing them a solid. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, what's what's the name of this uh, uh, lava mental? This <laughs> uh... magma. No, that's stupid. <laughs> Uh, I was about to say Igneous, but then I realized it might be too close to your name. Uh, but but imagine the potential. <laughs> Who'd you I... call? Yeah, there's like all this. There's always confusion because we got you know, Igneous and Iggy. Well, if you're okay <laughs> with it, we can go with Igneous. I, I'm okay Oi. with that. Yeah. <laughs> Their name is Igneous. We're just All like, right. Iggy, get in here. And he's just like, I told you to stop calling me Iggy. Not you, the other one. <laughs> what we actually like. Oh, that's messed up. I feel like Iggy's a fan of, Ig of Igneous. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy! 
and then two heads turn. <laughs> <laughs> One of them just turns all the way around because no neck. <laughs> yeah, it's just the eyeballs <laughs> rotate actually. <laughs> oh, that's awful. I love it. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh. Okay, that's good, that's... but also oh. Oh god. <laughs> I feel like one of my previous characters from a previous uh, campaign lives again in a weird form. I played a doll who basically didn't actually physically turn. They just shifted their head features around and then just moved in that direction. <laughs> That's so good! We're off to a good start, everybody. <laughs> off to a great start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, I feel with that, uh, we, I think we have all our initial world building done. Uh, we've created our characters, we have our tavern, and now we actually start our quests. So before we get in, well not quests, into our mini games that essentially represent time that passes in the, uh, tavern. So, uh... Uh, the way the um, game works is we continue to play little mini games in which uh, we either all of us play or only some of us play or only one of us plays. We take turn choosing these games. Uh, and uh, during these games, essentially, we answer questions and build a story and uh, a co collaborative experience in which uh, we essentially use our adventure experiences uh which we've also uh for example for my character uh i have a couple of adventure experiences um and out of that i pick three so for me it would be like i am very good with prestidigitation where i create small wonders i also am surprise surprise um uh, a master of flame with fireball and I also am very knowledgeable about Arcana. So those would be my experiences. And uh, um, uh, and as we play the game, we try to use our experiences to solve these problems. And if we are successful in doing so, we essentially uh, check down experiences. Uh, for example, I've decided I be the chef. Uh, um that is my town job so if i figure out a way to use one of them um i uh check that off and uh we may not get to it because this um this game can go for a long time and we're only going to be here for three hours um but uh the game sort of ends when every player has switched all of their adventure experiences into town experiences and um we're essentially we have settled in town, and then we sort of get into the end game. Uh, so, with that said, uh, the first game that we'll, we will be playing, as is given in this game, is called First Step. Everyone plays this game, and every character gains one town experience. Uh, we do that by each taking turns describing a short scene that led to that experience. Uh, another player or players might come with you, but they do not gain that experience. Basically, us describing what we did to gain this particular experience. Um, and there's a couple of prompts if you're stuck for ideas, but let us begin, I think. Let's let's shake things up a little bit. Let's go counterclockwise. So, let's start off with uh, Ignacio or Ignacio. How how you do can I call him Iggy? But Iggy. it is Ignacio. Ignacio. Okay, Iggy. Yeah. Uh, please describe what down experience uh, uh, you have gotten as we entered the tavern and started settling in. So I think um, Ignacio had a really hard time. Uh, sort of thinking about what to do now. I, I think he's like, I think he was sort of like, I can fight and that's that's what I'm good at. And then having friends like like you guys, like he like he sort of realizes like, no, there's more things I can do. There's like, there's there's more to life. But he still sort of struggles um, 
with with like a quiet life with like no adventuring. So I think he likes to climb like like he goes out of the tavern and he likes to like climb up like the mountain wall and take like a big look at the surrounding town and everything and sort of and and try and center himself by being up so high. Um and I think that's sort of how he gained his town job of of being a lookout where he where he sort of can oversee everything and he gets the town experience eyes on the horizon where you spot trouble before it starts. Wonderful. Uh, so Giacomo, what is your town experience? Um, if you need a little more time, um, back to you. Yeah, come back to me. Um, I like to imagine that part of what her transition into actually like settling down, I think she's had, uh, Elysia has just sort of had an ex a life where she was used to just sort of being the, the cleanup person for a lot of things on a nearby mountain. So she would be involved in things like air burials and like just making sure the different crops in the areas were still being taken care of when folks who are like, this would be a cute niche thing we could do and it'd be fun to like start doing this and then they just leave certain things to go to rot out in the area. I think her life was a lot of just taking care of that and learning how to do things like tanning, leather work and like sewing. And she moved into this area more with uh, gaining the job experience, I would say of um, preservation, because I think a lot of her time on the mountain, she spent alone for a good for a good part of her life until like sort of came into this group, and a lot of her time became trying to build like trying to expand a lot of the techniques that she used to have about saving food. She used to know about things like, uh, for anyone who knows what Junio is from uh, South America, which is essentially kind of like, there's processes where you actually smash up kind of certain uh, fibrous uh, potatoes and like starches that grow up in the mountains. You smash them sort of actually with your feet and you actually let them freeze. And they it's a manner of actually kind of preserving it to last longer through winters. So I think there was a lot of those kinds of techniques that she came into town and was like, you're, you're doing this wrong. This is, don't do this. this. This will not last for, this will not last. And then she also got corrected on a few things she had been doing for years. And I think she was like, huh, well, maybe it's worth sticking around for a little bit longer. And I think from that, she just started to figure out how to combine different techniques. And so she gained preservation as a result. Careful. Uh, Ding, how you doing? Yeah, so there's a in the in the book in the on the spreadsheet. There's two different things. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so, but I'm going by I'm gonna go by the book. So, Giacomo, uh, he is all about settling down now. He really wants. Uh, Adventuring life is, is over for him, and uh, he wants to. Um, he still wants people to remember him and and his friends, but not not just for adventuring, but for for this tavern. So he he wants he's he wants to do the best that he can, he can to make sure that this tavern is. When people think of this this uh, this adventuring group is is they think of the tavern first, and uh, and that's uh, okay. That's, so uh, the chronicler uh, experience. Awesome. Um. So for Lom. Uh, I feel like since they are a little precious on um, what they consider to be refined 
an edible uh, comes to this town and uh, is essentially um, stuck with a limited cuisine at the start and uh, uh, is, and out of maybe a little desperation and a little bit of okay well we're no longer adventuring and this is going to be our new life uh starts experimenting with the uh different preparations like for example all the preserved food uh that uh alicia has uh started preparing and kind of learns how to create uh dishes that are new to them specifically, not necessarily to the town, but just kind of learning by experimenting and trying and essentially um, getting the experience of parts unknown of appreciating different how to prepare them. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, the way the game, the, um, we choose our next game is essentially, uh, we each take turns picking a game. Uh, we... Ting, uh, you get to pick our next game. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna pick, uh, Sliced. Uh... Which is, is about uh, cooking with uh, cooking with monster parts because uh, sometimes we can't uh, get our normal supplies and uh, we have to use what we what's on hand. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, so uh, to play this game, uh, you are the cook, and uh, to determine what ingredients are at the core of your dish, uh, you will need to draw three cards from a standard deck. And okay. from each card drawn, uh, we'll roll two six-sided dice, um, so 2d6 to determine uh, how large the ingredient source is and where it's from. From. Uh, and then the rest of us will then describe the ingredient in more detail and tell you a highlight of this ingredient or a difficulty you may have while cooking it. Uh, so I guess essentially we're going to be kind of throwing, uh, throwing a perhaps a wrench in the works. <laughs> Welcome to Chopped. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just got the reference for the title of the game. I also just got the reference for the title of the game. <laughs> All <and> right. I, uh, <laughs> I only slightly groaned. Uh, I love it. So I believe, Tink, are you drawing uh, your own cards or are we taking yep, help? I did. Okay, awesome. Uh, please tell us what uh, your cards are. Okay. It's a. Well, it's a Joker. Oh, that, no uh, should, I, should I have gotten rid of the Jokers? <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. should get rid of the Jokers. We'll just uh, draw it again. Draw another one again. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, ten of diamonds, seven of diamonds, and uh, okay. king of spades. Alright. Okay. Uh, so, ten of diamonds. Uh... Ten of diamonds is shiny, and then diamonds Seasoning. are seasoning. Oh, yeah. gosh. Uh, and it. then, what are the other two? What's the other card? Sorry, you kind of uh, went really quickly. So, ten of diamonds, seven of diamonds, and uh, king of spades. Okay. So, uh, your uh, next ingredient is natural camouflage seasoning of it's some so kind. <laughs> and I then, uh, king of spades is a unique 
a plant or plant-based product. And then oh. I believe with the... Um, uh, you roll a 2d6 for each. Uh, so, oh. um, yeah, so roll me a 2d6 for the shiny seasoning. Uh, a nine. A nine. Okay, so... No, it's, uh, you just give me the two numbers individually. Oh, uh, three and a six. Okay. So... It is, uh, the size of a person. <laughs> and it can be found in the plains. Uh, so... It's a shiny seasoning that is the size of a person and can be found in the plains. Your second ingredient um, is okay. a uh, natural camouflage seasoning. Uh, mm -hmm. So what's the other two D6? Uh, one and a five. Uh, that is tiny. That makes sense. It can be found in the desert. <laughs> a, a, camouf a camouflage seasoning that's tiny found I in have the desert. So, I have I have ideas for both of them so far. Oh god! <laughs> I'm, oh my god! And then the last one, uh, okay. the unique uh, plant or plant-based product. Uh, Where is it? We got a five and a one. So it's a giant and can be found underground. Okay, so that one's a little more local. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I think considering that there's three of us, we each take turns kind of figuring adding out... Adding something. Adding something, like, based on those things. Um, all right. Uh, who wants to go first? Okay, important Which question. One? Which one of us wants to take the giant locale plant life creature i feel like that's that should be solved first um, i will take whichever one you guys think is the hardest because i have ideas for all of these i love them i, I love think so i think i might go with the local one because i kind of have an idea for that if that's okay okay okay, okay so um, I, I get mm -hmm. shiny minerals okay that were so i'll have the the camouflage natural <laughs> camouflage seasoning which is the best thing ever okay so, along with these monster parts that you have, um, I feel like you have another sort of uh, monster-esque ingredient um, as uh, there is this giant lichen ball that's in the middle of this uh, mountain um, that uh, essentially was kind of really really small but ever since the med this this volcano's gone dormant has kind of bloomed and grown and grown and grown and grown and now is essentially one entire cavern sized lichen ball but it's it's really important to to get this um because it helps tenderize or kind of you know, make the meat, the monster meat kind of taste nice. The monster part tastes nice. Um, but you have to be careful uh, while uh, you have to be careful about it because it's like uh, it's like tribbles. If you don't handle it properly, you'll just kind of it'll just grow all over. <laughs> I love it. I'm just imagining it that like our underground tavern it's like a local like hotspot like it's like the equivalent of like come here if you want to see the world's biggest tumbleweed or something except yeah. ours is a lichen ball. <laughs> okay. World's biggest lichen ball. We do tours on Thursdays. <laughs> yep. We, we, like, offer, we do tours we offer... on Thursdays. Yeah. <laughs> We we offer a spe we offer we offer a reduced cost for our pay pay to pluck special that we offer as a service at our tavern <laughs> on those a, days. Uh, you go. The the bundle. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a> bundle. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> got the Thursday bundle special. So I, so I, I feel like um, with the, each ingredient, how do you deal with it? Because uh, I think there's at the end, uh, we also uh, are the tasters. Mm -hmm. Um, and, okay, so you're the test group for this new dish, the player characters, a small group of trusted regulars, or a handful of strangers at a big tasting event. Each of you has something that you want from the dish, and then when you're cooking the dish, you roll a number of dice equal to four plus... Uh, your cuisine, cuisine rating. rating. Cuisine. Okay, so we roll five dice, ultimately, okay. in the end. Yeah, so maybe <laughs> maybe the simplest route is like, Mariam, you've just whatever your ingredient you described, that's that's you also pick out what you want uh, the dish for you to have in it, and then uh, Iggy and I can also indicate what we want after we okay. describe the little details for our ingredient. So yours is the giant lichen ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you want out of the dish? I think I want a unique combination of flavors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Iggy, do you want to go next, or do you want me to describe the ingredient? Because you have, uh, what was it, the, the tiny camouflage. thing from the Natural desert. camouflage is... seasoning. Seasoning. <laughs> so, pretty much, it, it, I, I am ready if you want to go. Yeah, go, 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 go. Go right ahead. So, pretty much what I'm thinking is, because these are monster parts, um, there are uh, desert lizards who have who secrete an oil that like hides them from predators uh but they're like nasty little thieves so if you like camp out in the desert they'll like camouflage themselves run up steal your shit and leave <laughs> um and so like and so they're they're small and and they're hard to catch because that you can't see them but the oils that they secrete that's that help them camouflage um are is just very, very uh, flavorful, and it enhances uh, it enhances the flavor profile of anything that it that it um, that you cook that you cook with it. However, if you um, if you're not if you don't prepare it uh, correctly, it's mildly poisonous. <laughs> to oh <people>. no. <laughs> So, so like it'll 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 send you puking if you're not careful in how you prepare it. So yeah, you gotta you gotta hunt some lizard, some really tiny like camouflage lizards for this like delicious cooking oil. Okay, so that's Iggy's, <laughs> and mine was like. Person, I think it was person-sized in the plains. Uh, what's the last little detail? I'm trying to remember. Uh, that oh. I think I was the oddity. I wasn't so a seasoning. I was uh, unique. Oh no, wait, I was a seasoning. Yeah, I was a Sorry, unique you... seasoning. Yeah. No, it was shiny. Yeah, it was... I was unique. Oh, yeah, you were unique. I was shiny, shiny seasoning of some kind. Giant person size. Person size. Person size. In the plains. <laughs> okay. That's that's a lot to, to digest. Okay. So I think there's this little overlap section. There's like a very small patch of plains that has actually occurred within the desert terrain itself, where people have always uh, people locally have told legends about seeing doubles of themselves out there. But it's because there is this little like tuberous worm. It's really small, but it can actually, with uh, sort of the oil it creates out of its body, similarly to, to the lizards, this one is adapted to the lizards by creating an even bigger version of something out there that it sees. So people who go out to investigate, it's created a person-sized version of them and the only way you can tell the difference between the original is that this the person size copy has like a shiny luster to the skin. So it's almost like from a distance they look like a shiny person size geode. But it's literally just like it's oh it's like a sentient oil 
that's just sort of out there and it looks person sized. And the thing is, it's it provides a unique kind of uh, like sweet and spicy kind of like taste mm. when it's cooked for just the right amount of time. But it's kind of has that like risotto kind of problem where it's like you have to watch it and like add the right amount of like water or things to it over time. Oh, yes, you, you have to yeah you have to pay attention to it like continuously. Otherwise, uh, it runs the risk of trying to copy you. Oh no! <laughs> so it's a little dangerous. You have an existential crisis of which one? Am I real or is this oil thing me? <laughs> <laughs> that's, so yeah, that's really trippy. <laughs> I, I was like person sized. This is that's the actual part that got me, and I was like, okay, let's go weird. <laughs> we gotta go weird, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to do this. So you're not yeah, allowed pers- to cook the oil on plug and play uh, on play uh, pay and plug days. <laughs> No, you're yeah. not, because when you do, everyone starts. We've had a, we've had an, we just refer to it as the incident. <laughs> the cloning it, incident. It's just a, a bunch of Spider-Man memes. <laughs> exactly, that's what I was thinking. Like Flam, Flam just come out of the kitchen, and then we see another Flam come out of the kitchen. And it's just turned to like, just like, it's like so, just have Iggy like raised fists at me with a bow. Uh, Flam, <laughs> one of them is you. Or we ask, uh, or we ask uh, the other Iggy to, I don't know, burn, you know, to kind of go and, uh, you know, poke, poke one, and if one gets a burn, they're the real one. <laughs> That's an unfortunate way of doing <laughs> things, but it works. All of us have like, all of us are branded. We can heal ourselves. <laughs> all of us are kind of branded by, uh, by Ignis, so we know who's who's who are the the real ones are. Oh, oh my god, that that's how we, oh, that's such a good, that's such an evil, but also a good way of doing it. We're just like, hey, Ignis, get over here. Burn. <laughs> you want to do something helpful? And it's like, I gave you guys a bar. It's like, yeah, well, it's something additionally helpful. Touch this person real quick. There we are. <gasps> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Okay, so that that was so that was a prep for it. So then it's now um, we king. cook the dish. Now we cook the dish. <laughs> so you roll a number of dice, uh, equal to four plus our cuisine rating, which at the moment is one. So you roll five dice, and then um, based on a chart that is here um, within the book. You place your, like, you look at the numbers and you decide where you want to place them and follow the prompts. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh. Ooh, see. So okay. we have, yeah, so a goal, seasoning, presentation, and texture. Yeah, decide and who. Each of the prompts so... uh, tells you who gives the description. It's either a taster or the cooks. Gotcha. So there's only four, we're using four of the, of the five dice. The five dice. Four pets. Yeah, so four you pets, place, so. so you place them how you want um, on on the, I think you have to resolve each of the prompts, and if you have extra dice, then you can add an extra, um, you can add an extra goal or a season, or a texture or a presentation. Yeah, so basically, for either uh, the sake of comedy or the sake of uh, just wanting to make things interesting, if mm-hmm. you want just like one to be your low number area, and then the rest like just bounce them out, you could do that, or you could just all make it ridiculous because these all have very fantastic prompts. All right, so uh, what is your what is the first uh, dice you're gonna resolve? Um. Go, and uh, I'll put a six on uh, go. All right. Uh, so you succeed. A taster gives you a compliment. Who wants to be the one to be? Who, who wants, wants to? to who wants to start happy? Chef. Who wants to start happy? <laughs> I feel like I feel like Iggy could give a compliment. I, I, Iggy wanted something that uh, reminded him of home. And I think, um, what type of dish did, um, 
Oh, yeah. Giacomo make? Do you think? Uh, what was the ingredient again? The lichen ball? We have right? two oils and a lichen ball. <laughs> Yeah, so it's what like was, a. It's so it's like a, a new vegan dish. It's like a no, vegan. It's, it's like a vegan uh, butter noodles. Oh. Except the oil was <laughs> from a lizard, wasn't it? So it can't be vegan. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> it's a dish. It's a dish. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I definitely think um, you have the image of like uh, Iggy with his like mouthful of noodles like some of them hanging out and he's just looking at uh Giacomo like he's so very happy and he like slurps it and he's like this tastes almost like the worm pasta my ma used to make <laughs> and it's like it's like it's like you put my old house in a bowl I mean, don't do that. That's rude. <laughs> but like, it's good. <laughs> yeah. See, see, everything you eat doesn't have to have parents. <laughs> yeah, parents, parents in it, or parents involved. There's, there's a two very different. Take. <laughs> <laughs> That's taken a very dark turn very quickly. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry to everyone on Twitch that just heard my, like, weird, like, wheeze laugh. <laughs> no apologies needed for this. They, okay. Probably half of them have ever seen me on a stream have seen me break down and lose my shit half of, half of the sessions I've ever run. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your next uh, 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 dice resolving? Uh, I'm going to use, I'm gonna use my, my one on presentation. All right. The dish might taste great, but it looks pretty unappetizing. One taster describes what part of the dish grosses them out the most. Should I take this? I I have an idea. Okay, no, go ahead then. So, does anyone know it was, uh, I don't know if anyone's been swimming at pools, but you know like the water, the, the pool noodle kind of things? Mm-hmm. This, this is important. Uh, I'm kind of imagining that some of the the noodles in the dish didn't come out properly in terms of like. It's just strands of lichen. Like, yeah, yeah. Some of it is strand. No, it's not just that some of them are strands of lichen, but the there's not a uniformity about the noodles. There's just some of them have like a weird floppiness to them. Some of them are just like stiff and rigid, and yeah. some of them are like super short, and then some of them are like as long as my face. So there, there's just like not a uniformity, and and she's she's trying to work on not being as blunt as she used to be. So she, so like her way of responding was, well, I wanted something interesting. You, you've certainly made something that looks interesting. She's just like she. You can see her physically straining to hold back saying anything else. She's just like, that's good. She's trying not to judge. She's trying not to judge really hard. He's <laughs> <laughs> over there just like. <laughs> What's our next uh, resolution? Uh, seasoning at a five. Ooh. Five. Uh, all right, so what pleasant memory does the taste of this dish evoke? One taster answers. Uh, I guess I'll take this one. Uh, so I feel like uh, as, as I'm sort of looking at my fellow tasters, each uh, sort of surviving their experience... <laughs> Or otherwise enjoying their meal. <laughs> um, I think it's. I think I feel like you prepared. Um, invisibility oil thing actually really well, and it's it the 
aromatics are just like not only did it come from like the kitchen but it's like uh um you could like smell it from the kitchen and you could smell it as it's being served in front of you but as soon as you bite into it there's like another aroma that it re releases that just has this like ah factor and um just it 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 invokes this memory of like uh this one time you know like uh i tried this dish at this like really good like royal like kitchen's place where they played with texture and aroma and uh it's, it's uh it was like this dessert like it's not it's it's a similar thing where it's like it was dessert that when when you bite into it you're expecting one flavor but get another and it's like this illusion thing and um it just reminded me of those times when we were at royal courts and feasting at at like you know the uh the five star places and just like oh this, this reminds me of the time when i dined in far nicer establishments so thank you <laughs> hey. precious enough for those backhanded compliments yeah i was about to say it's like, Oof, that hurt that hurt me the player not even the character the player hurt from that one i'm sorry <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> uh, Alright, so what's Last our next... Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, I think there's two more dice. Because uh, yeah. texture, yeah. texture was dice. not... Uh, texture has not been resolved, and there should be one more extra dice. Right. Oh. Um, so texture, I'm going to use another a six. And uh, so a bite, bite that melts in your mouth. Uh, perfect bite of bit of crunch. This dish is like sensory delight. Uh, describe what the most difficult part of achieving this was. So I think uh, trying to emulate the the texture of uh, of uh, of noodles cooked uh, cooked out there dente would be the most uh, difficult part, and uh, because Giacomo was focusing on on this uh, achieving this, you know, the, the presentation suffered. And uh, but uh, that that was his main uh, his his main goal. His his main uh, concern was getting the texture right. And then what's our last resolution? Where does that go? Oh. Is there one more square? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a four I'm plus. Sure. It's you roll yeah. a number of dice equal to uh, four plus the cuisine. There's one extra dice that yeah. gets put anyway. I think the extra dice are just to use to like try and get like more choices of like oh I rolled higher oh, on these so okay. I'm gonna yeah so there's only four resolutions that need to happen but the last dice gets uh, any dice past the f just baseline four you could just need for that can alter like what choices like if someone was like oh I got a one in this and I'm fine I I think it's funnier if this one's a one but yeah. another one it's like I wanted to I want the taster to get to say something ah, as opposed to okay. me saying it. I think that's more the intent okay, of it. Then, so um, we have done the four resolutions. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so at the end of every game, we kind of go through to make sure if there's anything, um, uh, if if we've marked off or experienced certain things. So the first thing is, uh, did any of us use our adventure experience to get a new down experience? Okay. Uh, then the next thing is uh, to, for character relationships. Did we create any memories 
uh, essentially any relationships that we want to memorialize in a sentence to add to our characters. Um, Iggy is very happy that Giacomo uh, made uh, something that reminded him so much of home. So. Yeah, well, I think I will also add uh, that uh, uh, Giacomo uh, made a dish that reminded me of the finer times in life. Pre-coaxing lava elemental to <laughs> let us run a tavern. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, would this would this be inspiration that I use? Power uh, up your friends. That's your call. Yeah, it, it it is it is that's something that is complete uh your call. It have um used inspiration. Like if you believe you've used inspiration, then you essentially mark that off and then uh if you believe that uh has uh translated into one of your town experiences, then you actually check that box off. So you uncheck one to check another. Oh, uh, so... Like, there's a used section, so if you kind of, like, click that, then um, you've essentially used it. I don't think it'll, it would translate into any. any if you don't feel it's done or... anything, that's that's fine too. All right. Um, but yeah. also in the game, like even if you don't feel like it translates into something, after the game you can do like, oh, you know, in the time that passed, I think I gained this town experience. It's always an option as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, do you feel that you an experience as time passed? Um, a friend in need. Actually, that kind of works. You probably had to no. find... Know who to call for a favor. Yeah. yeah. Finding, finding the elusive lizards would probably have prompted needing a friend to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Just a, just hey, a buddy, can out. you milk my lizard? <laughs> what? It's like, yeah, I need you to milk a lizard. It's not weird or anything. I just need to milk a lizard. It's like, okay. Also, can you get me some worms? It's like, uh, <laughs> still weird. Still weird, but okay. Okay. Uh, oh. And unless there's anything... Uh, want to address, we can move on to our next game. Alright, so uh, Angela, what uh, game would you like us to play next? Let's get things, let's make things a little bit more rowdy and let's go to a friendly tavern brawl. So, the text from this is, every tavern has its rowdy patrons, you know they're good at heart, but sometimes when the ale is flowing and spirits are high, things get a little out of hand. How do you handle the situation? So set up one or more people can be the brawlers. They can be folks who are currently among the players or NPCs. And uh, what is the disagreement that caused the first punch to be thrown? And then we need the de-escalators. Uh, this could be just one person, but should usually be several people. What made you get involved and who was the first to intervene? And so we'll go about the different steps for the game uh, to sort of approach it, separate it down, and then talk down. But who who is interested, if anyone, in being brawlers? <laughs> I'm I'm surprised Iggy is a brawler. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm a good de-escalator, though. So, so I think by by order, because I am a precious I am a precious person. Um, I feel like uh, I guess I will also be a brawler. Okay, and then uh, 
I think Alicia, I think to get out of comfort zone for what I imagine for the character, I think she will be a de-escalator in the situation. Mm. Giacomo is also a de-escalator. Okay. It tries to be then. <laughs> Try. The keyword just tries. So. Okay. so Iggy, why'd we get into... Do our naturally so hot temperaments get in the way? <laughs> So what I'm actually thinking is instead of being Iggy, I can be an NPC. And because your character is so precious and very focused on cleanliness, I think it's kind of like a very, like, maybe maybe he has a little bit too much to drink and he's sort of like spilling stuff all over the tavern. Okay, sure. What's, uh, one of my favorite jobs, what's the name of this NPC? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, um... Barnabas. Barnabas. <laughs> Barnabas. You're telling me Barney came into our t our tavern? <laughs> Is this what you're saying? Yes, and yes. because you said Barney, he's like a big, like, purple lizard folk. Oh, no. <laughs> you're gonna make me... We're gonna make Barney... Barney a belligerent drinker. Uh, this is... This is the timeline I never thought I would be in, and yet here <laughs> we are. This is the darkest timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, this is the most heinous of timelines. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I guess we start the fight and then begin uh, essentially the game. So we started off, I feel like, uh, like you said, sort of spilling drinks, maybe a little belligerent. Uh, and, uh, I feel like, uh, Flom is initially just like, oh, you, and just flick off the finger, cleans it off, but, like, literally five seconds later, it's- Like, it's they're sloshing beer out again, and, like, it's getting, like, messy, and it, because it's, like, a cave, it's getting kind of muddy on, like, on the floor, and he's just sort of, like, laughing about it, maybe slinging a little bit of mud around the floor. And do you think initially it was accidental, but because I'm cleaning oh. things so quickly, it's you're now like deliberately like now it's a the, game like a cat straight in the eye, boring it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like I can I can picture him as like wait wait look look at how fast Flom is. <laughs> and at this point, I feel like rather than cleaning it, suddenly kind of doing a different uh, hand gesture, and it is now burning away. Like, just... Oh, that's you so that. neat! One Whoa, more Whoa, time. do it again! <laughs> One more time! I swear I will yeet you out of this establishment <laughs> so hard! You'll How think you're... How tall is Flom? What? How tall How is Flom? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, a very, uh, a very sturdy four foot five. Oh, dang. And by sturdy, Barnabas. I mean very delicate. Barnabas is like, if you can eat me, I'll pay you 50 silver. And he just dumps his drink again. <laughs> you dump it on, Flom, I feel. Not so. I don't feel like he dumps it over Flom's head, but definitely on Flom's shoes. And you can see now there's like a wave vein bopping <laughs> and like um, pulling out a book, which I feel anyone else in the party knows. If I'm pulling out my spell book, sh you know, stuff has gotten real. And I feel like this is a good a point, a uh, good point to start trying to break up the fight. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's I think what caused uh, I think us to intervene, <laughs> like, like that that's the moment where we're like, uh, Giacomo, this is not gonna go well, like at all. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Which one do you want to handle? Uh, I think the... I 
think I'll take the customer. Okay. So you're leaving me with a scary job. Great. This is great. <laughs> this, is, this is nice. This is nice. <laughs> just she she walks over and she's just she always looks tired because she's just like she does a lot of different like energy issues just whenever she's trying to take care of anything, and she's like, "Hey, hey, Flam, what you doing?" Um. Looking up a spell for telekinesis. Do you, do and you I'm know just like that... fucking furiously like S. Why is there a V before the T? <laughs> uh, that there's there's problem that I don't think you've updated the book in a while. Um, last time I saw you playing around with it, which was ages ago. You know the last time this happened. What, what do you happened? want? I'm a little busy right now. Uh, yeah, about that. Y you know, it's not gonna go over well if you chuck someone out of the bar. Well, we're, we don't have a bouncer, so I guess I'm doing that job right now. I mean, I know someone else who could deal with it. That it we wouldn't necessarily say it was us. Well, was... either spit it out or get out of my way. It's, it's less... Okay, fine. It doesn't require me to spit it out. It requires me to make a call. You see her, like, hold her hands out together, and she makes a bird call. And, uh, you just, you all hear, like, flapping of wings coming from outside of the tavern. And just, like, the little nook that counts for a window for the side of the tavern. I think she's just, you just see a condor just perched there, just, like, peering its head in. I have a question, and I'm about to say something I shouldn't have, probably. Sure. What is it? Are you tall enough to spell telekinesis? <sighs> oh, that's it. And uh, I kind of shut the book, like, just close the book shut with one hand. And I am now, um, you notice the space under the customer's feet? start to get red like it's starting to glow hot like i've set it on flame <laughs> what's yakubo do by the way for dealing with the customer because yeah. i think that's your call too. yeah yakubo was uh was trying to get the customer's attention like away from the chaos uh he's uh he's in he's in the He's on stage, like in the performance area, and there's good acoustics there on it, uh, around it. So, uh, uh, just trying to get his attention, like, hey, hey, and just just playing the playing his drums as, as loud as he can, as as well as he can. Does it does it work? Does, does it work, Barnabas? I I, I, feel, I feel like Barnabas does pay attention, but uh, I guess I I don't think he, I don't think he's trying to move, but he's just like sort of like huh, <laughs> looking over his shoulder. I feel like you because of the the noise or something, you're kind of moving out of the zone of hot mm -hmm. lava rock that is starting to form, which is very good. It's, it's a very good thing to do. Okay, so I feel like we kind of did the approach and we kind of uh, did the separation. The um, so how do how do how does the talk down occur? Uh, well, the eating occurs. It's just not by the means it was originally suggested. Uh, which is to say, I'm imagining at this point you just hear, you see Alicia just like, like put it. Alicia puts like a hand on Flam and is like. I can get rid of them, and it won't be us who are responsible. That makes you feel any better. Fine. Fine. And you see this the stone starting to get uh, cooler. Uh, as I sort of mutter about, well, I should probably get the bananas fosters up again 
<laughs> random dish. What is what is our menu? Never mind. I should not ask that question. To Mario, <laughs> but what our menu is, it will just be here for like an hour figuring what it is. But I think at least it just makes a bird call. The condor just kind of like swoops in through the window and just perches on, uh, perches on Barnabas's like shoulder. Oh, that's a big bird. Oh, hello, birdie. And I, I'm imagining the bird just looks you like dead in the eyes, like just goes like looks at you directly. She's like, "Time to fly." And then just <laughs> the talons <laughs> grab both of the shoulders and just pick them up and just start taking them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Just condor, condor just swoops in. <laughs> okay, I feel I feel like this is a good time to get into the aftermath. Uh, so. Were any of the PCs hurt? If yes, how do you help each other recover? I feel like only Flamzigo was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think... I feel like... Uh, do any of you... Uh, do any of you help in, uh, I guess, massaging Flom's ego? Iggy will Iggy will offer to like carry you around on his shoulders for you to feel tall. Uh, he, he, he missed the whole thing, so he was just like, "It's you can see you'll be super you'll be taller than anyone here." Okay. Tak Takuma will Takuma will play a soothing song. Like <laughs> like a, a, a. He probably already has like a a song he plays. For uh. For uh. For Flambe, like Flambe's tall song. <laughs> That's really great. That's so cute. <laughs> okay. So then the next question is, was there significant damage to the tavern? If so, what is it going to take to fix it? I think aside Scorch from... Scorch mark? Clean, yeah. <laughs> but it's stone. It's fine. I mean, it's also <laughs> in, a, in a dormant volcano mountain. <laughs> <laughs> We're cool. We're good. We're good. This is fine. So my next question, because this next question is really important to me, did you kill Barnabas? No. No, did okay, not kill Barnabas. Him with a bird. Okay, so you just bounced him with a bird. I just bounced him. We have a, a bird condor bouncer. as a bouncer. I felt like the way you were saying, like, we can get rid of him and it won't be us. I'm just like, did you... Did you kill? Did you I didn't kill. I didn't kill. First you have Baron Pasta, and now we have Death by Bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The intent was not to escalate things to that level. It was Perfect. just more like if we're the ones seen like tossing someone out, it reflects poorly on the bar. If it's just yeah. an animal just happened to come by, that's different. That's an unfortunate circumstance. Okay, and then our last question is, how do you deal with the brawlers? Are they banned? Uh, do they need to pay a fine? I feel like this is actually probably the most uh, pertinent question of the aftermath. I feel like Barnabas might be banned? <laughs> yeah. If, if, if Flam says, I don't want Barnabas in here no more, Iggy's like, yeah, get the hell out. Get the hell out or face the wrath of tall of of tall flum. And then he just puts the flum on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have like my fingers kind of wriggling ready to cast something. <laughs> I'm just imagining uh Alicia's re response is something like uh, it's it's the it's the Simpsons meme of like, don't make me point at the sign again, except for her, she's just like 
pointing on the outside sign for for the tavern and there's just the big ass condor just waiting there just like chilling out sleeping but it's like don't make me wake her up again don't make me wake her up okay let's do end of game stuff uh so did anybody uh make use of their adventure job uh adventure experiences and i feel for me yes i did as I used quite a bit of my firepower, so to speak. Uh, and... Hey! I feel like... Uh, I... Uh, am now a grill master. Yeah! An expert at grilling food and subordinates. You know when I first read that I was like cannibalism and then <laughs> and then Rem was like no. no babe like 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 when you grill someone like like an interview or it was like oh that yeah. makes that that makes more sense and is less terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh I I used mine. I I used uh animal companion and transferring that into handler. I feel like she's just like, "Huh, I wonder if I could do that more often." Just keep that in mind for future occasions if something goes wrong. And so she's moving into farmers. That's how she starts getting interested in doing farming work. She's like, huh, what if I could get other animals to help us out? Uh, yeah. And, uh, Go ahead. And I uh, used Devil's Fingers. Uh, playing, my, playing my instrument. And translates that into uh, parable. <laughs> lesson for every situation. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. Uh, the lesson is nowhere. Mess the tall flam. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Iggy, did you, even though you yourself weren't in the scene, were you able to mark uh, experience? I didn't use any. Um, I didn't use any experience, but I like that fact because it's just like, oh yeah, Iggy's having the hardest time settling down in the town. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, then, character relationships. Are there any memories that were made? Tall, flum, tall, flum, tall, yes. flum. Yes, oh, yeah. tall, flum. <laughs> That's all I'm putting in my in my memories is just, just the phrase tall, flum. <laughs> tall, flum. <laughs> okay. Uh, and... With that, we are actually are following the mechanics a little as we will now be taking a short five minute break. And when we return, we will uh, continue with our games. Uh, uh, go hydrate, use the facilities, you know, get a little snack or do something, but definitely do a little bit of self care and uh, uh, stick and uh, stick around, enjoy the uh, music. And uh, we'll, we will be right back in about five minutes. Um, Hydrate or dihydrate, guys. Okay. Yeah. Murder on this stream is surprisingly <laughs> strong. <laughs> for, for, such, for such a Honobona game, there's so much darkness and murder. All right, we'll see you in it's five. <laughs>
welcome back everyone. I hope you had a good small break, uh, hydrated, um, and uh, bought snacks or stuff, or did something good, essentially. Oh, kind to yourself. Uh, now that we're back from our break, uh, we will now begin our next game, which is actually a game you play after every three games, called uh, Wear and Tear. So there's always something to fix or clean or to pay off. After, after we're done with this game, we may increase our tavern rating by one. So this is a game that anyone can play. As a group, we decide what part or parts of the tavern need fixing and touching up and what the new features of the tavern are. We will each take turns describing what work we are doing for the tavern, and we can pick one of the following prompts listed below to get started, or we can come up with our own and everyone needs to pick one. So who would like to go first? I have an idea. Um, cool. Go for it. I think I think all of us uh, just has a like has a sit down chat with uh, igneous about them them controlling the the temperature and how how you know <laughs> it needs to be more evenly spread out and, and you know not as volatile for the for the guests. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Uh, who else wants to go next? Um, I feel like Iggy has the idea of better airflow, like making a couple new openings to the tavern, if only for the chance to, like, climb up the side of the mountain and hit stuff. <laughs> Okay. Gotta take gotta take the punchy punchy route in order to make our problems easier. So instead of like <laughs> arrow arrow slits, it's like uh punch slits. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Who am I to stop a man from enjoying himself? I I will be that person to stop a man from enjoying themselves, but that's because I'm me. <laughs> that's fair, but Icky's sweet, probably. <laughs> I actually have something, if it's okay, for um, sure. me to go next. Yeah, so go. I feel like as part of my settling into the life of a rural chef, often kind of out of out of place, you know, um, podunk a tavern. <laughs> Lom's words, not my own. <laughs> Words uh, still hurt, you know. Um, Plum, is, feel... Plum is bougie. Plum is very bougie. <laughs> <laughs> that actually caught me. Plum is like one of those valley uh, people, or like you know, like I don't know, um, uh, the up. Uh, uh, what is like it? The upper, upper upstate, upstate or... sort of people. Um, so it's like wondering, huh? You know, we should we should have a very signature drink. Uh, so I am going to put in all the all the um, uh, uh, arcane components that I know that are used to boost energy. And to, you know, boost, uh, uh, boost stuff. And I make this cocktail that I call, um, uh, the, uh, Blaster of Pan. And it causes you to, gar you have to gargle it down. Ah! <laughs> I get that reference. Um, and the secret ingredient is, uh, Pop rocks. <laughs> is, es is essentially <laughs> volcanic rock that, uh, dissolves in the drink, but sparks. Yes. It's I'm, it's, I'm once again 
somehow in another game where the phrase activated charcoal has to be used by me in terms of what's coming to mind. So here we are again. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I think, Alicia, you've got uh, your uh, prompt left. Yeah, I, I have an idea. I, I think she... I think she she tries to figure out something to do with um, with Barnabas actually coming back, like actually try and have her like like I think in her mind like maybe he tries to come back again. She's like, okay, I need something to distract this person more than just me having to send a bird after him every single time because that's I feel bad for my bird friend having to do this. So I think she actually starts trying to figure out. Like, what would be a better variety of uh, ingredients, actually, to uh, for uh, Flam to actually get to use? So I think part of that is she, like, goes through a couple of the secret tunnels that are in the back of our tavern. And she's like, this is a terrible idea. Of course I'm going to do this. And goes down into them. And she probably finds, like, this tiny little patch of like fungi and another little like cave lily that grows that when it's prepared like one preparation of it because it's mariam and i have to i i suddenly thought of this uh one variation of it is a very pleasant and calming tea variety when the when the flowers are actually steeped well and for just the right amount of time and then the fungi in and of themselves, they have, uh, I imagine, because I just had this for something else before, they're very, they have this strange, intense bitterness to them. And trying to eat them directly or even just cook them mildly, they're terrible. But if you're willing to wait and dry them out or expose them to intense heat to dry them out quickly, like if you gave them to a conveniently uh, located lava elemental to quickly dry them out. It's like, here, touch this. They yeah. <laughs> they they release kind of like a sweet juice oh. that to them so like they gain a sweetness that you would not expect because like anyone who tries to like eat them is like this is terrible why would you do this a caramelization then, exactly so car caramelization process fungi reaction <laughs> <laughs> but yeah heat gushers Heat, heat gushers. <laughs> Fungi heat gushers. Fungi heat gushers. TM, TM, TM. I'm making. No, I'm joking. Why, why is this a phrase that has been said, <laughs> said in the game? Fungi heat gushers. You invited me here. And... <laughs> I want to say we made a mistake, but I can't. This is perfect. This is glorious. So yeah, she she looks around and I think she finds us better ingredients to help us get like a signature dish going because we're like, okay, we need to actually serve. Flam need if Flam's gonna be bougie, let's at least actually like validate said menu? bougie. Yes, <laughs> yes, an actual tasty menu. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So yeah, I think that covers uh, her support for helping improve some aspects of the tavern. Uh, all right, so which rating do we uh, actually increase? I feel like with the cuisine and the focus on the cuisine that perhaps it's a cuisine, but I can be persuaded otherwise. I feel like we could we can make an argument for atmosphere or cuisine. Um, I, I'm kind of leaning towards atmosphere, but... I I actually feel like because we're playing a shortish game, we could probably increase both. Yes. Yeah, I think. Hey, why not? Make the rules what we need. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's no police. There's nobody's gonna come in and kind of like bust the. <laughs> Is that gonna say anything to us about this? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I appreciate in chat we've actually prompted someone to just write WTF after the phrase mm -hmm. "fungi heat gushers." This is a, <laughs> truly we've accomplished great things in the stream. All right. I don't know how to clip, but I want a clip of that. Uh, fungi heat gushers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think there's something within uh, the player on the desktop where you can kind of go back and clip. Uh, oh, perfect. Yeah. 
I will uh, do this for us later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, so uh, our cuisine is now at uh, we're now a two star rating. So, which is the equivalent of a modest kitchen, a couple of ovens, a regular supply of essentials, and a few bottles of good stuff. And our atmosphere now is canvas scots, freshly painted walls, and clean windows. I feel like because we kind of have an unusual tavern, um, than what I think the stereotypical tavern would be, I feel like this translates into, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, especially with the whole you, you've taught how to control the beds and everything, we've managed to convert, uh, the ones that were really kind of we couldn't control them we actually could move them over to the kitchen side or the guests side Ooh. and actually kind of maintain the temperatures needed for both although sometimes if the tavern gets full we just let some of the you know dragon kin or the lava kin just sleep on our kitchens <laughs> <laughs> Sure. You know, I mean, sure. I, I feel like the health and safety is not really a thing in this world. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to agree yeah. with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> uh, let's get into sort of the end, the end of game thing. Where uh, did any was anybody able to? Uh, convert their adventure experience into town experience. I finally did it. <laughs> awesome. What 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 have you done? I brute strength new windows into the tavern. <laughs> 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 and um I like to think that uh the added airflow um it actually uh while he's like while Ig Iggy's being like a weirdo and like climbing outside the tavern to like find himself. He can actually start hearing things from drifting from inside the tavern. So now he knows like all the latest gossip because he's got his ears to the ground. You heard it first. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyone I'm, else? I'm, I'm gonna say that. Uh... Her looking around and finding this strange fungi and cave lily uh, has made it so that her harvests are large and exquisite and are part of her bounty experience where she's decided, well, you know, I found some weird things looking here, trying to track and follow trails. I think I'm good with doing that again because the next time I find it, I don't know what I'm going to find, but it might be even weirder. And I think she's good after... <laughs> Finding weird fungi for fungal heat gushers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that alone, that it's not that she couldn't do it again. It's just she's like, I shouldn't. My powers are too strong. Look what I found this time. Uh, anyone else? Uh, okay. I feel like I made, uh, for me... Um, I actually did, uh, use, make use of my arcana, so your knowledge of the magical and unusual is unparalleled in creating this energy booster drink, um, you know, uh, blaster of pan that you, uh, uh, imbibe by gargling it, uh, and, uh, I feel like that has uh, led to me being able to call the shots by, you know, some quick thinking and some split-second decisions to create this thing as part of our tasting menu. <laughs> uh, okay, and then the next part is character relationships. Did we create any memories? Three words. Fungi, heat, gushers. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we'll <laughs> <on there. laughs> That's all I'm writing down. I don't know if anyone else has any words. It's just this is what I'm writing. I Honestly, it's oh one of those God. things where memories are what you make of it. 
I think the <laughs> indent was sort of building character bonds and relationships, but hey, if if uh, our relationships are defi defined by phrases, so be it. Yeah. Tall flam, fungi heat gushers. Condor yeet. Condor yeet. Condor yeet. Okay, uh, and with that, we will continue on to our uh, next game, which, uh, Val, what game uh, would you like to play next? You know what helps someone, like, really feel at home? Making connections at home, like, like maybe, like, romancing strangers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let us uh, get into romancing strangers. Do you want to take that away? Yeah, I didn't have the game up because I'm bad at my job, but... I'm almost there. There we go. Alright. Someone in the tavern makes eye contact with you. Their gaze lingers a little longer than you expect. Your coworkers urge you on and make every excuse they can to send you to go talk to the lovely stranger. Uh, one pair plays. Um, I have played this game where the coworkers are also reacting to what's going on in case everyone wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of my favorite games in this system. <laughs> I think that that would be amazing to see how everyone like adds on to the situation. Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, if you're comfortable, uh, Val, I I'll happily play the stranger route. Sure. <laughs> okay. Go for it. All right. So, romancer describes a detail about the stranger that drew you to them. Um, I feel like um, because we're a tavern in like a mountain area with like a volcano and stuff, we draw a lot of like a lot of types looking for like uh, minerals and stuff like that. And I feel like uh, we have someone came in that like looks like a rugged mountaineer, and Iggy's just sort of like, ooh, they look, they look neat. They <laughs> they look like they know what they're doing. <laughs> I, I can give you I can give you something even uh, to add on to that. Yeah. She's a dragon kin. Uh, but part of why actually she would express she's you might have overheard when she came into the tavern was her expressing uh, that she was actually looking for a rare mineral to actually consume to see if she could uh, help her health hasn't been the best as of late mm -hmm. and uh, for her group, uh, part of what it means to reactivate one's breath is there used to, I, I think I've read like some, if someone were to give a scientific account of how a lizard would breathe fire, it would be by consuming vast amounts of certain kinds of minerals. So mm -hmm. playing with that kind of idea, she's very tall, uh, long, like black hair back in a kind of a ponytail, but it's still very apparent. She has like scaly skin, somewhat humanoid, but more on the dragonkin kind of side. And mm -hmm. she has like, instead of like a flask she drinks out of like you it's still a flask but like you hear something kind of like sandy in the in the bottle when she's drinking out of it because she's actually like drinking down straight up minerals and like you see her just breathe a little like cold breath every now and then yeah i think yeah i think that's just like i don't think he's met anyone like her before. so he's just like oh that's really that's really neat she's She's really tall. <laughs> I think I'm really tall. We I have think, that in common. Yes. <laughs> I think she notices the fists and the gauntlets. Mm -hmm. I think I think she's kind of intrigued by like seeing another fighter type. Mm -hmm. She she's she's really well built, and she looks like someone who could probably bench press several hundred pounds on her own. So she's just like that. But she isn't going to initiate. Two gym rats finding each other. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, my dear friends, you see Iggy sort of dithering near the bar. How do you, how do you push? How do you urge Iggy on to go talk to this lovely lady? You could always send it. Send it tasting menu across and say it's from you I wait just just the paper or like the actual order 
Where's the actual uh, order? <laughs> I... You know what? That does make a lot of sense, Flom. You're so smart. Of course. I'm the... I'm... I'm the most knowledgeable one here. Yep, 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 yep. And, listen, I don't... I don't want to undermine that. Takuma, is this a good idea? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Go for it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. And I think he starts to walk away with just the paper, and then he comes back. He's like, "You said to take the drink." And and the fungi heat gusher. And the fungi heat. <laughs> you know, ignite a little passion. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be bursting with. <laughs> what did you get into? <laughs> The oh. phrase bursting with juicy goodness just came to my mind as a result of that. <laughs> um, so I think you see Iggy, like, he's, like, straight spine, very, like, ah, uh, yes, I am a fireman. <laughs> um, he uh, comes over with the, uh, the drink and the fungi heat gushers. <laughs> And is like, this is our tasting menu. I would like to bring it over to you. I, I have brought it over to you because um, you look very cool. And he puts it down on the table. Are you, were you perhaps trying to make a pun, dear? She just lets out another like cold breath. <laughs> I think this is definitely, I compliment you and you think I'm making fun of you, but I'm completely earnest. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, I, uh, I'm not that cool. I just wanted to say that you are the most interesting person here. Hmm. That is saying a lot in a, in a place like this. I haven't been anywhere like this in quite a long time. It's a really nice place. Um. I'm proud of it, though my friends work a lot on the tavern. I just try to make sure that no trouble comes by. Mm. You know, use these. Uh, I think she'll respond by uh, when you gesture. She reaches out a hand as well to like feel. Uh, my oh. hand is close to yours. Do you take it? I think he, like, I think he sort of like, like, what are you asking? Oh, yeah, and then he just puts his hand pulling something from in hers, and then he's just like, and then he looks back at them like, oh no, I'm holding her hand. What do I do? Like, <laughs> he doesn't say that, but he, there's a look of panic as he looks back at Flam <laughs> and deer, the deer cotton headlights look. Yeah. Is there any sense of support from from those two? Like as he like stares back, like what have I done? I feel like at this time, um, uh, Flom has basically asked uh, Iggy the barkeep to kind of like I don't know, uh, go do something celebratory to kind of like uh, lighten the mood. And I feel like Iggy shows up with like you know these fire flakes, which was this new thing that was introduced. Throws it up in the air and says, Muzzle Tov, and walks off. <laughs> <laughs> so look of a trail, like, really, that's that's what you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> but he is, he is holding, he is holding uh, her hand. <laughs> and I think he remembers, my name's Iggy, what's yours? <laughs> It's Anastasia. You can call me Anna. That's really mm. pretty. <laughs> hmm. I whispered to the child, your couple name is Ki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No talk to me at me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, um, oh, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna say like, since he's still got his like hand out, you know, at like for her to hold, he's just like, you know, I, you took my hand, but if you wanted to, you could take my heart too. I tell a corny joke. Do you laugh or tell an equally corny joke? I think her response, which will be my response uh, player-wise to you, is that she 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 has the you see an audible grimace <laughs> on her face, but then she's like, I don't know if I should do that. I've been known to occasionally give people the cold shoulder. Oh, and then she... out laughing. <laughs> She, I think, for just the second question, because each player for this kind of game uh, has two. Second one will just be, hmm. I name a place you remember visiting. Uh, I'll I'll just say the name of the place is just called Daros. Mm -hmm. And she'll just mention, like, she, I imagine there's a little bit of conversation starts, and she just mentions it in passing. But what experience have we shared? that we both done while we were there. I feel like Garros is where he got these gauntlets made. And I think that there is um, specifically a tournament for um, for fighters that's like very like 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 a like it's like a bare-fisted like boxing tournament that um that he had like taken part in in Garros. And I think I think that's what he brings up. Um so maybe she had visited it, maybe she took part of it in herself. But he's like, "Garros, I love Garros. Uh, that's where I got my start." Um I kind of learned I was good at fighting by taking top place at the tournament. Really? I assume that's where you got the gauntlets from. Yeah, I... I never liked... Uh, the use of, like, bladed weapons, crushing weapons. There's something about using your hands to protect what you care about. That's really important to me. My father was quite known for uh, approving of that sort of attitude as well. It's a reason why he worked so hard on making those kinds of gauntlets. And I think, uh, and she she very, lo like, sweetly, like, kind of caresses along the hand and what have you. I think I remember the day he finished making this set as well. She's just, like, very playfully just, like, touching each of the gauntlets, like, along the fingers and everything. Like, right around to the wrist. Mm-hmm. And like I you see her, like t she takes off her gloves, which have been like her own, like just personal. They've looked so dainty and fancy, but you see, there's when you see her actual hands that are very clawed. There's like cuts and bruises and everything. She looks like someone who's like ruined her hands fighting, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I think he sort of like um. So I'm gonna go out and say uh. Because you said Anastasia, and he's like, is your father Vladimir? And he's going to take off his gauntlets, and he's got the same, like, sort of, like, his like his fingers maybe don't curl that well, and you, you see that, like, he's got, like, like, as if he's broken them and then set them himself before, and, like, the scarring and everything from fighting with your hands, and he's like, <laughs> these are, I've never, I've always taken care of these. These are the most important these are an important part of me. And I can't believe that Vladimir's your father. I mean, I can believe that. You just... I mean, you just... Yeah. Sorry. I'm bad with words sometimes. <laughs> Not that bad. I like hearing you talk. He's gonna look back at over at Flam and be like... <laughs> <laughs> With a quick glance, he's trying not to get caught. 
<laughs> just like, yeah. <laughs> Giacomo starts playing something, playing something light and danceable. Playing something like bossa nova type stuff. Ooh, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Closing time. Closing time. So we we've spent the evening together. I, he uh, Iggy would have asked um, Anastasia if she wanted to dance for a little bit. Um, she but... she would. <laughs> so the tavern is almost empty. The tables are being wiped down. You both get up from the table you've been sitting at, talking, and wonder where all the time has gone. Romancer, do you say something before the tap the stranger leaves for the night? Do you go with them? Who is the first person you'll tell about this? Um, so I think, I think Iggy is gonna, is, is, I think the way he's approaching this is, um, are, are you gonna be around, uh, for a while, or are you just passing through? I like the songs here, and like, these, uh, strange little gusher things are quite delightful. I've never quite encountered one of these kinds of things before, and I'm, Kind of partial to keep trying them a little bit more. And it's actually quite a, a nice change to be somewhere so hot at such random intervals than to, to be where I'm from. Garros tends to be quite cold most of the year. I mean, for as long as you stay around here, I wouldn't mind getting to know you a little bit better. Sure. Will we get nice. to talk more, or is it? Are you looking for something else? I mean, I like I like talking. I like doing a lot of different things. Uh, I'm very good at doing a lot of different things. Talking, <laughs> other things. I can walk really good. <laughs> the idea just made him panic. <laughs> I, I think she won't elaborate. She'll just say she'll be back the following night. And she'll just let him sit with what the possibilities of that could be. And the, probably the last thing she'll say is, I would be happy to talk some more some other time. And more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I, uh, I mean, if she's staying at the tavern, he wouldn't mind walking her to a room. She's not. Like he might he doesn't mind walking her out. And then he would immediately turn and run towards Flom and he's like, I did it. And I've been actually watching this entire thing, but the minute like either of them look at me, I'm like, Oh, what wonderful architecture. Hmm. I feel like I I hear the banana fosters need lit. <laughs> 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 Miriam, I'm gonna ask you something that might like side rail everything. What is a bananas foster? Uh, okay, so I could be completely in my mind. I think it's like banana. F I think it's that's what it's called. It could be called something else, but it's essentially a car a dessert where it's uh bananas that are in this sort of like um rum sauce or like some sort of an alcohol sauce mm -hmm. and you flambe them to finish the port. Um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I think it's, it's... over pastry or over something. Um, but I remember that's one of the more showy uses of a flambe. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I'm looking up uh, images of it right now. It is in fact uh, delicious. I want that in my mouth. But uh, unfortunately, I lack the means to acquire it, so I shall be sad and hungry, as is frequently the case when Mario <laughs> describes <laughs> food. So on brand, don't be, don't be. This is the this is the benefit of all conversations that I'm involved with right. or games I'm involved with. Mario is that you leave hungry, which is a good thing, I think. <laughs> I mean, that kind of goes against all the hospitality I've been taught growing up, where nobody leaves hungry. <laughs> Intangible <laughs> virtual table talk. <laughs> all right. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's what a Bananas Fosters is. And it's like, yeah, so it's like every time I'm 
either you or Anastasia look at me like or notice me kind of staring at you one like how's it going how's it going how's it going I, I kind of turn around and pretend to be doing something else uh, when you approach it. me <laughs> like how'd it go tell me all about it no don't tell me all about it no tell me about it no don't <laughs> I don't want to know. Yes, I do. I don't. <laughs> Just coming tomorrow. That's the main thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know why I got more gravel. My voice got more gravelly as the evening wore on. Because it's 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 because 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 you got tougher. You got tougher as the tavern got like tougher. <laughs> It, it would be impressive for someone to make a tavern like barkeep or just main NPC who's a quest giver but who has the voice mm. of like, hello there everyone, I've come to offer you information about your next trial and what the next will follow. It's, I don't know, something like that. Just the most <laughs> absurd... Elmo has a new mission for you! Hello. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! What <laughs> No, that would be the most. No quest would ever be done because you never want to talk to that person ever again. Uh, but I to get us back time. on track and not lose the mood, um, I believe the stranger has to answer a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, will you come back to the tavern tomorrow or at least someday? Yes. I think uh, she'd come back frequently. Uh, I don't think she'd be able to actually stay in town very long. But uh, I think whatever follows will be whatever uh, both of them show uh, enthusiastic interest in. Yes. And I, I think probably as a last, like, fun get-together as maybe, like, to see what what he might have been like in his prime, uh, I think she will try and actually, like, do, like, challenge him to, like, a fight. <laughs> Fist fight to show affection. It's my whole life. <laughs> we, we've discovered Val's brand is fist fight with affection. Literally on Twitter, there was this thing of like, "What is it like to date you?" with pictures on your with pictures on your phone right now, and I was just like, "Bisexual means <laughs> I am attracted to anyone who can beat me in a fight." <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. That covers quite a few of the Greeks. Like the Greek <laughs> myths. Not mod. I mean, okay, I might bury myself. I was Carry thinking God. of myth mythology. You know. I know what you meant. I yeah. Know what you meant. Okay, uh, with that, we go to our next game. We do have a little bit of time, so I shall pick this game. Um, and it shall be a bard's tale. Uh... So, during your time as an adventurer, you accomplish many daring deeds. In fact, some of those deeds are retold as day by traveling bards. So, the setup for this is one player is the bard, another is the adventurer. I shall be the adventurer. And, um, uh, we do have a bard in the party, but, uh, if you would like to be the said bard, that is fine. If you do not, then someone else can play the traveling bard. Uh, yeah. Someone else can do it. Okay, who would like to be the traveling bard? Okay. Bueller. 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 <laughs> okay, Bueller. Okay. Bueller's... All right. Wait, who's Bueller? Is it me? No, it's just a reference. <laughs> to carry on. Okay. Ignore me. Oh no. Nah. So I feel like I've played a lot tonight, but I'm like also excited I've also to be a like. Lot. A really, a really annoying bard, though. <laughs> uh, whoever would like to pair up with me, uh, I'll some... pair up with you, Miram. Okay, let's see. Okay. Let's let this. Let's let this okay. chaos ensue. So to start, we shall answer some questions. Uh, I, as the adventurer, what detail of the story makes you realize that this tale or song is about you? I feel like it is the fact that. Um, it is like every time, no matter what genre of song it is, it always talks about flames and igniting the passions and kind of like really there's a me metal twang to whatever flavor of uh, bard 
deal there is. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and as a bard, how did you learn this deal? Is it directly from uh, the mouth of an eyewitness, another bard, or did you piece together the story from multiple versions? So I think when we're talking about like igniting passions and everything, and you mentioned that we used to be, like we used to travel in like a uh, court, like in, in people like like royalties courts and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the bard learned this from like several like really like nasty gossips in court. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness! Yes, and I think it's a song about. Um, I think it's a song about potentially uh potentially fooling uh someone who might have um please tell me if that's if this is okay so potentially fooling someone that might have uh had feelings for flam sure <laughs> sure uh yeah <laughs> oh my goodness okay so similar to the previous game uh we will each take turns uh asking questions um, depending on how the story goes, uh, we, about two or three of them, uh, you use a particular set of prompts from telling the tale, and I will use prompts from interruption. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like because I kind of overhear this happening, I feel like you should go first. Okay, so I'm gonna go with what is the most popular part of the story? that everyone agrees upon. And you're gonna tell me if this is actually correct. So I feel like um, the the whole tale, since it came out from like this jaded court, is that um, this fiery adventurer, the, the one who sets passions aflame, uh, was trying to take over the kingdom, but mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> Ooh. And it just reminds me of, uh, I feel like it, uh, it, it, like, in reaction, I feel like that kind of reminds me of this one time we were in, um, Cryosia, where, uh, um, we had to leave very suddenly because in trying to help save the kingdom, uh, we may have kind of destroyed one section of the city. <laughs> Not on purpose. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I feel like... But I... were you attempting a coup? Like the song no. says? No, uh, because <laughs> what part of the story do you forcibly take over because you would hate to hear told wrong. I want to clear it for the record that it was not a coup. It was never a coup. It was simply a monster that was more destructive that we could just could not contain. And if that meant, I don't know, the whole market district kind of going aflame because I missed and hit the marketplace, um... I would rather that the monster who is dead and cannot speak for itself anymore take the blame. <laughs> I love it. So I think the bard looks a little rumpled when he took over when he took over their story and they're the like The bard does not know okay. that it was actually my fault, just that it was the monster. Yeah, and they're like, okay, I guess. And and they're trying to like get back the audience's attention. So they so what part of the story is a guaranteed tearjerker? They they go they go into histrionics about like how upset and betrayed this this member of the royal family was at losing their only passion. The person who set their heart aflame and the city. <laughs> And, and I feel like uh, at this point, I sort of, I really do agree with you because what part of the story do you find yourself telling unconsciously word for word in sync with the bard about the princess whose, whose heart was aflame? Um, and that might have been literally because I had made a 
concoction which gave her heartburn. <laughs> but we are saying the same words, but we are meaning different meanings. <laughs> I love uh. it so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think the I think of I, I, I want to add one more thing. So sure. What dramatic flourish have you added to please the audience? And um, I think I think um, because I think while you know that the story is about you, the bard doesn't know that it's about you. <laughs> and so they're like, they say they still have secret meetings trying to c overcome differences to bring themselves together and bring a new <laughs> bring a new age to the kingdom and she's like oh, bye. <laughs> i feel like uh so that people don't associate it with me but also i can feel good about this tale being spun um i add one last thing as well um, of how to uh, spin the tail even taller is that uh, um, the princess has uh, has el has eloped with uh, uh, and and in a weird way to also maybe add get more uh, get more uh, infamy for the tavern. Um, that the princess eloped and has uh, l is living heavily uh, happily ever after down under a volcano. <laughs> I love it. So ending the tale. Uh, so uh, when the tale has come to conclu conclusion, answer these questions, Bard. What is the epilogue of the tale? Does it have a moral to convey? I mean, when you add the fact that the princess is living under this, like, living down under in the heart of a volcano, um, he's just like, and love, true love, doesn't exist because you live in a cave. <laughs> so, instead, <laughs> focus on your work. And make money off of it. And then he puts his hand out for coins for telling the story. <laughs> uh, and as the adventure, what? what happened after that that no one else could have known? Are you happy with the, how the story was told? So here's the thing. The princess... Um... Did actually <laughs> uh, run off, uh, but to uh, but to become a chef because she was so upset with the meals that I was experimenting with and serving that she's like, I can do better, and I'm just going. And I'm done with all these, like, crappy chefs giving me crappy food. I'm going to make it myself. That is the <laughs> most... Re that is the most amazing reason to fucking abdicate royalty. He's like, <laughs> I'm done fucking eating shit meals. I'm going to make my fucking meals. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I abdicate! <laughs> So she didn't actually elope, but she did leave. I love it. Were and, you happy with how the tale was told? <laughs> uh, I was happy with everything except for the end morale, because that felt very anticlimactic, but I, did, I felt like I might have gone a little too far in uh, influencing the tale, lest someone actually connected with me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so end <laughs> end of game sort of things. Uh, did uh, did you use <laughs> experience, uh, adventure experience, uh, um, into a town experience? 
Um, so I didn't this game, but last game I used Master of Unarmed Fighting to show off my sweet, sick, awesome hands. Oh yeah, did did I did I do that? Did I forget to do that? I'm so it's chill. It's so chill. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I just I just wanted to show off that like I changed the adventurer job from fighting to pugilist, and I called the adventurer experience caught hands. <laughs> 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 but that's uh, it. I didn't get any experience. <laughs> okay, so I think I actually I did not use any particular adventure job, but um I feel like with that tale, especially since it was about the fact that I gave the princess heartburn and a lot of other things, that um I have a refined palette now since then, like just reflecting on it um, with my sense of taste now being second to none. I love it. Uh, and then uh, any memories to take from this? The moral is don't fall in love. <laughs> Focus on your career. <laughs> I was gonna say the takeaway was abdicate the throne for better food. <laughs> yes, no, that's yes, so much better. Abdicate the throne for better food. <laughs> okay, and with that, uh, we come to our last game for this uh, evening, um, as well as for 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 this particular one shot. Uh, which is in the rhythm of things. This is a game similar to the first steps where we all take part and it is the last game. So time has passed, rough edges are sanded down, and before you know it, life in town has become like breathing. Gather in your favorite part of the tavern and wonder where time has gone. So the setup for this is, as it's the last game, everyone plays. Everyone describes a habit that your character has picked up from living in this town to start, then proceed to ending questions. All right, so who wants to go first in describing a habit that we've picked up? That you've picked up from being in the town? Um, I feel like after uh, a truly amazing uh, fist fight with Anas between Anastasia and um, I I Ignacio. I think he actually um, just I, I don't know if this comes to habit, but he I think he lets any any uh, town townie just like fight him for five dollars. <laughs> you want to fight? <laughs> five bucks. Sure. I'm I'm just I'm just trying to go cash my check, man. It's like yeah, but you want to fight? <laughs> <laughs> I got ten minutes. You got you got a lunch break. You want to come fight? No, I mean I, like it's sort of like it's sort of like one of those like uh like one of those um like oh you know are you good enough to fight Ignacio? Like can you take can you take a hit from Ignacio or do you just fall a lot out? Like it's one of those things where like like younger men will be like oh man. I bet I could take a round with Ignacio. Oh, oh! So he's he's known as like the local legend kind of yeah. kind of vibe to him. I love that. Uh, yeah. I think I have picked up the habit of uh, flame, the use of flame for utilitary purposes rather than destruction. <laughs> I love it. Do you have a habit, uh, Chakamo? Uh, I think Chakamo has uh, picked up the the uh, the habit of uh, going out uh, every morning and uh, before the tavern opens. Sweeping the front of the front of the door, like where the where the welcome mat is, and 
Yeah, just like keeping the front of the tavern, uh, the walkway clean. Okay. That's very cute. I think um, Alicia, her last, um, I think we're representing moving from have, focusing on true north of an erring sense of direction to represent gaining the hobby. I think she's just gone out of the town every now and then, like every like weekend or so, just gone out, looked out some of the area. And I think she's picked up predicting the weather a few days in advance. I think she's realized we're living in a mountainous region we sh that's built into like the actual mountain. We should probably be aware of when a landslide happens since we got this place literally when a landslide happens so we should be aware of how to protect our own tavern so i think she just does that out of like lingering anxiety habit but it just turns into a thing where she's like you know i noticed it's probably going to rain soon or bigger winds or it's going to be i think i feel like almost like there's an earthquake that's coming like she just gets a sense about it and she just starts predicting and she's usually right and 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 does your anxiety um increase when flom creates a dessert special called mudslide <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no! <laughs> I mean the answer is yes <laughs> severely <laughs> Also, I agree with Defiados and Chet. That is a very good name for a dessert. It's called the Mudslide. It's and very good. And it's basically good. like um, this, this like um, chocolate mountain where you pour like hot chocolate sauce over it, and it all just sloughs off and reveals the inside core, which is like this gold, uh, um, dusted brownie or something. See, I. I, I, I had the thought uh, when you went that it was going to be like a shell that when the melted chocolate appears over, there's like a couple scoops of vanilla ice cream. But a brownie on the inside sounds even better. That's that's so good. God, I'm hungry again, Mario. I'm so hungry. Sorry. <laughs> Just had food. <laughs> All right. Questions. All right. So Also, holy shit. We got a, 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 yeah. a, a raid a coming in. Hey there, little red dot. Yeah, thank you and so friends, much for the raid. Hello there. Hi. Catching us at the very tail end of uh, our little adventure playing Stew Pot, where we're all ex adventurers running a tavern, where we're just getting over talking about a new dessert that <laughs> Mariam's character, Flambe, has created. <laughs> that name uh, every time. Uh. Okay, so now we all take turns asking each other questions. The person asked is the next person to ask someone a question. Uh, you can use the questions that are below or come up with your own. And this game is over when everyone has been asked twice. Uh, so I feel like, uh, Alicia, do you want to start this off since we're the last person to uh, come up with the habit? Yeah. I'll say to Ignacio, what was the hardest part of fitting into town? Oh, Alicia, I think the hardest part of fitting in anywhere for me was realizing that I, it was realizing that I could be happy instead of just waiting for the next part and then once i realized that i wasn't just waiting for the next part and i could just enjoy town and make friends i a lot a lot got easier uh Flam, <coughs> bless you. Thank you. Uh, 
Sape, gato. <laughs> Plum, I know that you had a trouble settling at first. What surprised you most about living in town? That there is elegance and refinement to be found even amongst the dust and the rocks. I say while sipping one of the blasters of ban. Sorry, not sipping, gargling one of the blasters of ban. <laughs> and there's like little little uh, bubbles and sparks coming out of my mouth as I'm gargling. I fucking love it. That's so refined. <laughs> Bougie uh, ex bougie <laughs> wizard gargling a drink is an amazing sight. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Giacomo, what is your favorite memory of building up the tavern? I think it was uh, us finding all the secret tunnels. It's like that was one of the last times you know we went uh, exploring together. Flam. Mm. Uh, what was the best dish you remember eating that one of one of us made? Uh, I think it would have to be as peculiar as it was and as shoveled as it was. It would have to be the time you made that lichen noodles. I felt like that, that oil texture, that was so uh, Iggy. Yes. What do you not miss about it? I think it's funny that you mentioned that because, again, it was so hard to live here, but I don't miss, uh, what is it? You know when uh, you would sleep and then sometimes you would find like a monster suddenly jumping through the tent? I don't miss that at all. <laughs> Now, if there's a monster here, I know when it's coming. It will never ruin my bedroll again. For stone slab. <laughs> that too. <laughs> so that makes it sound like Iggy's had had his own like bedroll. Like we've all been on slabs, but Iggy's been holding out on his <laughs> bedroll. <laughs> Oh. Iggy took Iggy, Iggy didn't take the adventurer pack. Iggy took Iggy took the explorer pack that came with like a nice bedroll. <laughs> Wait, you all have you all have bedrolls? <laughs> no, it's just like it's like fuck your like tent stakes and your little like sixty foot of rope. I want like a I want like a small kit of like parchment and I want a bedroll. <laughs> Iggy was thinking of the long term. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, let me turn the question on one of you. I know I'm not the only one. Uh, Alicia, what do you miss about adventuring? I think I'm missing different kinds of people. I think after a while, it gets to be a little comfortable here, and you just know everyone, even when some new folks stop in. And I kind of miss that pretty much everywhere we went, we'd get new people. But, you know, 
sometimes new people aren't that great, so I'm kind of okay with just being here with the folks we know. It's <laughs> even even when some of them can be a bit much and just sort of eyes towards the door. She or like a little bit past the entrance to the tavern, she sees Barnabas coming. He's like, hmm. Even when they're a little too much, I <laughs> I haven't been comfortable a lot of my life. It's kind of nice to sing and do the most uncomfortable thing is, oh, it's that person again, as opposed to giant thing trying to eat me or new person trying to cast his magic on me. It's kind of nice. Although maybe the casting magic on me won't end anytime soon. It just looks at Flambe. <laughs> Giacomo. What was the worst dish you remember eating that one of us made? <laughs> that would probably be... Uh, Flam's first attempt at lava cake. Oh no! Was... <gasps> I think I actually just tried to make a cake of lava rather than. <laughs> <laughs> Did Giacomo ask for lava cake and they thought that Giacomo was being literal? And I was like, okay, that's a little can cannibalistic and s insensitive to our uh, one employee, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Iggy, can I borrow some of you? That's the wildest <laughs> way you could put that. <laughs> that's so... <laughs> Oops. How would you return it after it was yeah, I don't think you do. Not we in the, a, not we in a, a, yeah, but people borrow sugar and milk it all the time. It's not like you can give it back either. Oh, that's but true. But it's not a literal part of a living entity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why I said, that's why I muttered to myself, that's rather insensitive of our current employee. <laughs> You're so right. I love this. <laughs> okay, but I guess I'll try a lava cake. <laughs> was that all of us twice? I think, yes, yeah, I cool. think so. I think that was everyone twice. Oh, by the way, we did, did we ever it. name the condor? Is the I don't condor... think we did. I, I don't think the candy? condor ever got in. What was it? Candy. Candy what? the condor. Love it. <laughs> I, I'm okay with this only because I can't immediately sense another pun. So I'm gonna go with okay. Yeah, no worries. I mean your condor is just working your working her way through school, it's fine. <laughs> Audience <laughs> Not players. I'm sorry for everything that I've said tonight. But I refuse to apologize to Angela in specific. <laughs> <laughs> we... In a game in which we've had a non-zero amount of mentions of cannibalistic behavior, that's the thing that breaks me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Okay, and with that, also, uh, oh god, what are you doing? We kind of start fade, fade to black, but I feel like um, our own little spin might be, uh, you know, like at the end of a movie, there's these epilogues, like of like you know, like the, like in uh, what is it, uh, the Breakfast Club, where you kind of have like a still and then like a little epilogue of what they did. Uh, do we do we kind of want to do that? Uh, yeah, I totally... make, make it quick. Yeah. So, uh, who wants to go first? Um, Iggy writes letters to uh, Anastasia 
and I feel like when it gets, uh, when it's like the summertime, Iggy takes like a month break to go visit Garros. Uh, Alicia helps. Uh, I I think she she spends a lot of time with doing farming work. She actually starts growing a few of her own varieties of the cave lilies, and uh, remembering that um, I think Giacomo had uh, had some difficulty <laughs> uh, with singing as the years went on. Later, I think she would spend some of the last part of her time like working on a tea variety specifically to help like vocal cords and relax so to make it easier like so that he's more comfortable for later years if it gets too tiring for him she just works on that Giacomo discovers uh a candy has a knack for uh playing the drums <laughs> so he, he's coaching <laughs> yes he's coaching the condor Teaching, teaching them to play the drums. Yes, yes, yes. This was not something I knew I needed in my life, but I'm so happy about it. Oh my god. <laughs> and uh, Flambe continues to um, invent new dishes for the restaurant, uh, for the tavern, and eventually enter some. Um, um, international tournament and loses to a Kryosian princess. Uh, ah! <laughs> yes. That's so great! <laughs> yes! I suppose with that, that's Stewpot, everybody. <laughs> yes, that is Stewpot. Uh, a very accelerated and condensed uh, version of it. Uh, if you do like the game, uh, definitely go check it out and uh, I guess enjoy it for its more expanded uh, version where we're not trying to fit it in three hours on a live stream. Uh, <laughs> and with that, uh, let us end uh, this evening with a quick uh, going around the table and uh, telling people who you are and where you can find yourself on the interwebs. Um, whoever would like to go first. My brain cells are starting to kind of go, go, go sleep by bed. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, I'll do mine real quick. Hi, I'm Angela. I've been playing Alicia. Uh, I love being here and playing Stewpot is one of my favorite games of all time. Any chance to play it, I'm always happy doing it. You can find me on Twitter at phoenix24fem or on Patreon at philosophem, where I'm a professional writer and poet and where I currently have 146 pieces up for viewing. Half of those are patron exclusive. The other half are open for public viewing. I'm a GM over at Heroes Without Limits on Mondays for the Plains of Providence campaign. Half of the relationship podcast for Queerly Yours with my nine plus years partner, who is also trans and we're an interracial couple. And I'm also part of the online publication Art for Ourselves, as well as a musician for hire, and as well as a player over on All Nerds here for the City of Mist campaign, uh, Royal Flush of Wild Cards Adventure on Sundays at 3 p.m. EST. I'm involved in a lot of things, but I think that was all of them in a short amount of time. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, yeah, Ting. Uh, hi, I'm Ting. Uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, Ting Tut, and it's got links to all my other sites. Uh, t on Tuesdays, 8 p.m., I'm I play. Uh, in the risk game on the Nerds with, Nerds with Dice channel. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Valeria. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Villain Vicencio. Um, you can see me on streams more regularly on uh, Sundays playing Sound Clash. Um, on, in 10 days, we're we'll be doing a fundraiser for uh, to try and f raise funds to pay an audio editor to turn our campaign from the stream to a podcast. Uh, so, so we can have a podcast uh, uh, blah, 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 version of it, too. Um, I play a punk rock uh, mom who fights fascists. So it's like super fun to listen to. 
<laughs> um, or you can see me every other Wednesday on Off the Table playing Monster of the Week and an all been pop game, all in a little all been pop game of Monster of the Week with Russ Wild uh, GMing. Or you can hear my voice weekly on Kingdom Hearts of Forgotten Era, an actual play podcast uh, for Interstitial. And um, I just play, I play sad people on that, but like I play interesting, sad gay people because I'm an interesting, sad gay person. <laughs> <laughs> Got a brand? Um, Stick to it. Exactly. <laughs> and I, that's it for me. Wonderful. And I am Mariam. You can find me on Twitter at Media. Or junkie, uh, I you can find me here usually either producing, um, sometimes playing, and even rarely uh, facilitating or running a game. Uh, and you can also find me on Kahania, which is alternate Wednesdays. Yesterday was our penultimate episode for this particular season. Uh, so uh, next week, no, two weeks from now. Uh, I believe that'll be over close to the Thanksgiving holiday uh, will be our last episode this year and this week. Uh, you can also find me on the Mustafers and Prism Pals. And uh, I, I do quite a few projects, but I think the thing that I'd like to highlight the most is I am now a magpie uh, GM for the Curated Play program, and I will actually be running my first... Uh, Game of Bluebeard's Bride uh, tomorrow. I believe there's still one spot left, so if you're interested in uh, playing Bluebeard's Bride with me, um, sign up. And uh, there's also spots for the 20th and a one more game. Uh, but if you check out my Twitter, it should have all the details. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I believe in terms of programming, uh, yes. Sorry, I want to add one more thing that uh, sure. on the 22nd through the 24th, um, uh, I'm going to be part of Fuck Cancer Roll Dice. Yes, I'm also I'm, going to be part of that on the I'm 26th. I'm going to be yeah. part of that as Me well. Me too. Uh, <laughs> we all forgot. Join us. Join, join us. Join us for that. Uh, join us for fuck that. Cancer. Uh, check, out, check out our Twitter for more information because I don't have stuff off the top of my head. I am running a game of dialect. I believe the same night as our next game roulette game that is to be announced uh so uh that's gonna be a long day for me <laughs> uh but yes uh we we are all um uh, uh a part of that and that is a lovely charity stream so please check that out uh and uh i believe tune in next friday for um uh the next chimera game uh, so that's yes. going to be, yes, uh, it's a really, really fun game with a really amazing cast. Uh, and uh, uh, definitely tune in for that. Words. Words are hard. Words are hard. It's the end of the night. <laughs> it is the end of the night. Um, uh, but also now we are going to, I see that Imani's online, so we will be raiding um, her and her channel. I believe she is... What is she doing? I did Beat Saber. Yes, Beat Saber. Yes, playing Beat Saber. So if you can stick around for a couple of minutes while um, I move us over to the uh, stream ending screen and uh, please give Imani some love and uh, we will see you all in our next stream, whatever that may be. Take care and take care of yourself and stay safe, y'all. Um, mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye.